everyone. Welcome to On the Other Hand. I'm Ariane Zercher and today I'm going to be stitching and chatting and just catching up. I was going to do a live stream and then I thought, you know, I think I'm going to do a taped only because I wanted to be able to get more done that I could show you. So when I'm doing a live stream, you know, it's live. And so I can only do so much in say 45 minutes or whatever it is. And often it feels, I come away and I feel like, well, I didn't really get much done. So, I mean, maybe some of you don't care, but I feel like to get more bang for your buck, even though, I mean, let's face it, you're not paying for this, but you are having to put up with those ads. I do try to weed them out so there aren't too many, but um, anyway, I just thought, let me do a taped version that I can edit. And the beauty of that is that I can stitch and then show you what I've been doing you know, over a much, much longer period of time. So something that might take me three hours, I can show you and you'll see the end result. And maybe I'll do a live stream too later. I don't know. I'm sort of all over the map. Honestly, you know, I have this website. I keep praying that it's going to be up and ready to launch. And then I go and look at it and there's more things that need to be done. And there's little things here and there that I need to edit. And, and I just, it's not that I want it... I was going to say, it's not that I want it perfect. Truthfully, I do want it perfect before I launch. That's not going to happen. But I would like it up to the point where if someone purchases something, I'm not having to then do a follow-up email and say, you know, oh, and by the way, there's this, this, and this that I forgot to mention kind of thing, you know? I feel like that's important. But we'll see. The other news is that those of you who have been watching me know that I really struggle with exercise. I hate the gym. I'm just going to have to say it. You know, I just hate it. And when the pandemic hit, the gym was closed. So yay, no gym. Easy. Don't have to even think about going. And then the gym opened and I thought, well, this is ridiculous. I mean, I'm not going in there. It's like, you know, rife with COVID, you know, infection. Who knows? I mean, just, I just couldn't, I couldn't, couldn't do it. So I froze my account and then they automatically unfroze everyone's account in April because vaccines are out and they figure, you know, and they're desperate for us to all come back and start paying our dues. So I thought, well, you know, okay. And that was the end of March when they notified me that they had unfrozen my account. So guess how many times I've gone to the gym? So today, my, my husband, who just got back from the gym, he, I said, I don't know that I'm ever going to be able to get back into the gym but maybe I'd go if there was a class, right? Like maybe I'd go if there was a class being held. So I went to look at the online classes and I had to, you know, sign all kinds of online agreements and tick all kinds of boxes before they'd even let me book. And then because of the social distancing, they're only letting like six people into a class or whatever, I don't know. And you have to wear a mask. So I signed up for two. One of them I wasn't able to. I never could figure out why. So I've signed up for two. It's a big commitment. Tuesday and Friday. I can't say I'm looking forward to it, but I've made the commitment. You know how when you make a commitment and then you feel like, okay, well, now I have to go. That's how I feel. Like, I'm not a person that, signs up and then cancels. Once I've signed up for something, it's sort of like, okay, that's it. I'm, I'm there. I'm done. So I'll report back on this little exercise thing. The other thing on the top of the exercise that I just want to say, some of you know I have the seven-minute app that I downloaded and then promptly forgot all about 
which was convenient, right? And at the time I downloaded the app, I'm thinking, I cannot possibly rationalize and talk myself out of seven minutes. I mean, who could do that? So, okay, I have no idea what I was talking about. Um, there's just always interruptions. My husband's actually really great. He puts up with all kinds of stuff and I'm, I'm literally in a room that he has to walk through to get to the bedroom, the ba our bathroom. I mean, there are other, but we do have another bathroom in the house, but still, you know, it's, for those of you who've ever lived in New York City, you've heard of railroad apartments. Railroad apartments are where you have a room and then you have to walk through the room and you have another room and then you walk through that room and you like a railroad car. And those railroad apartments, they would call them, you know, they'd say, oh, it's a two bedroom. Well, the bedroom you'd have to walk through. So if you happen to be the person at the front of the of the train on the railroad <laughs> apartment, everyone's walking through your bedroom. That's kind of how my studio was. You got to walk through it. It's okay. These are the little challenges of living in New York. Thankfully, I have an awesome husband. He's really great. He's very supportive. So let's see, what was I talking about? Seven minute workouts. So I managed to rationalize and then conveniently forget that I'd ever downloaded that app. So even after talking about it, which was basically a way to shame myself into, you know, by using all of you as <sighs> that didn't work either. I exercised one more time on that app and that's it. I've done it, I think exactly three times, maybe two, can't remember. It's been a year since I downloaded that thing. So exercise, what else? Oh, so Saturday was lovely and it was a lovely day and I took the entire day off. I did come home and do some stitching at night, but I took the entire day off. It was lovely. And I just have to say that if my friend Jane is watching, hi, Jane, I have no idea who's watching. That's the thing. Unless one of you, unless you guys reach out to me and say something, I have no idea who's watching these things. Could be anybody. But I, you know, I'm in the comfort of my own home. I'm filming. I kind of forget that. I mean, not that I'm doing anything. I don't know. Terribly. Yeah. Anyway. So unless you reach out and say something to me, I have no idea who's watching. So every now and then I'll run into someone and they'll say, oh, you're doing X, Y, and Z. And I'll say, well, how did you know that? And they'll say, well, I saw it on your YouTube channel. And I'll think, what? You watch my YouTube channel? And they'll say, sure, yeah. And it turns out they know, you know, so then I have no idea. And it's so funny. Okay, so we're going to get stitching. Oh, I know what else I wanted to say. My friend, Pat Polly. Okay, we need to back this baby up. Okay, do you see this? Do you see this fabulousness? Do you see my shirt? Do you see how it matches my shirt? This is my friend, Pat Polly. You guys have heard me talk about Pat. I know you have. She's fabulous. Do you see this behind me? I learned how to do all of those prints in a Pat Polly workshop. Pat is fabulous. By the way, this scarf I had intended, seriously, I bought it and I thought, oh, it's perfect. I'm going to give it to my mother. And then it arrived and I thought, well, I'm just going to try it on. I mean, I'll still give it to her, but I'm going to try it on, right? So I tried it on and I thought, well, it's not like it's her birthday or anything. I can just get her another one. So it's mine now. <laughs> yeah. Mom, if you're watching and you really love it, maybe I'll send it to you, but I don't know because I really love it. And all of her scarves are one of a kind. 
But if you really love it, I will buy you one and send it to you. Of course, I could always just send you the link and you could buy one. <laughs> I know, aren't I a horrible daughter? I'll send you one, I promise, if that's what you want. But I don't even know if my mother's watching this. She may not be. So I'm thinking, let's start stitching. And as we stitch, I'll have other little stories to relate and tell you all about. What I was going to say about my friend Pat Polly, though, before I turn around, before I turn all of you around, she does these fabulous scarves. She also teaches really great workshops. They're all about quilting and quilting and or painting and dyeing fabric, right? Her dyeing and painting fabric workshops are amazing and she's a lot of fun. But I recently took an improvisational quilting workshop with her and I loved it. It was so much fun. I'm not a quilter. It's way out of my league. I mean, I really don't know what I'm doing when it comes to just like chopping up fabric and doing I, improvisational stitching. Got it. No problem. Quilting, whole different part of the brain being used. Having said that, I loved her workshop. And then she mentioned this other thing, technique that she does where you insert like a little line. So then she said, oh yeah, that's another workshop that I'm thinking of doing. And I said, well, when? And she said, well, I haven't put it up on my schedule. So I wrote out this email to all these people I know. And I said, are any of you interested in Pat po Polly doing a line shape setting workshop, virtual workshop via Zoom? And a bunch of people said, yes. So I wrote her back and I said, you know, I've got a group of people who would probably sign up in a like nanosecond if you put it up on your website. And so she said that she would, and she's just put it up on her website. And I contacted those people, so hopefully they've already signed up. But now I'm telling all of you, and here's the thing about her workshops, they sell out really fast. So if you're interested, I'm putting the link in the description section, and I suggest that you go to that link pronto and sign up because it will sell out and it'll sell out quickly. Just saying. Wanted all of you to hear it here first. Don't forget to click on the thumbs up button. It helps me with YouTube's algorithms. Don't forget to subscribe so you never miss any of these videos because, you know, this is important stuff that I'm covering. And you hit the subscribe button. There's a little bell that pops up. You click on that. I always click on all. I get all notifications. So when someone then posts something, I see it. Uh, let's see what else. Also, I just want to say I really love supporting other artists and like my friend Pat or other YouTube channels like my friend Anna Bates over on Quilt Roadies. You know, when I first started this video, this YouTube channel, it was Anna who was the most helpful person of anyone. She helped promote my channel and get it out there by talking about it on her YouTube channel. And she has a huge following and she's been doing this a lot longer than I have. And it was really Anna who, who, you know, I always knew when Anna talked about me on her YouTube channel because suddenly I'd have like a hundred new subscribers within a 24 hour period. So it's just so lovely. There's this whole YouTube community. And I recently met, her, met a woman named Rachel who has a YouTube channel, very popular YouTube channel called Roxy Creations. I subscribe. I should know what it's called. I'm going to put the link in the upper right hand corner of this video. I'll also put it down in the description section along with Anna's quilt roadies. She also has a, Anna also has stitch roadies, which is, I believe, cross stitching. But Rachel has also, I know, talked about me on her channel because people have come over and said, Roxy Creations sent me over to you. 
And I just think it's so nice to have this really lovely and loving community that we're all par a part of and that we can all sort of support each other and cheer each other on. And um, I did a live stream last week and Rachel came on and she was, um, she said hi and introduced herself and I was so happy to meet her. Um, also, um, Fiber Talks, another uh, YouTube channel who does, um, like, they do interviews with different artists and um, I think they do a couple times a week. Anyway, they were on the live chat as well. And um, someone I'd not heard before, heard from before, Juanette, she has a YouTube channel and she also was on the live stream. And it was just really, really lovely. I mean, what a lovely, supportive kind of family of stitchers, you know? We all love this thing, this stitching. And I just think it's so wonderful to be able to support each other and encourage everyone to go over to those channels and just say hi. And, um, you know, it's, it's really nice. So go over to those channels and say hi. I'm going to put the links to all of them in the description section. And yeah. If you haven't started stitching, I'm imagining that a lot of you are already stitching as you're listening. I'm going to start stitching now, too. I wanted to show you this thing that I have. It's actually got a hole here and a hole here. And it's horn. And it's these sort of irregular shapes. I cannot remember where I bought them because I know you're going to ask me. I'm going to try to find it. If I can, I'll put the link down below. If the link isn't there, it's because I cannot remember where I got them from. But they're pretty cool. And I thought, how fabulous would it be to put this down in here? These are little beads that I bought from the bead chest. I'll put that link below as well. They're lava. And I did a little... Um, what did I do? I used a, I believe it's silken. I don't remember. Maybe it's a pearl cotton. Steph Francis pearl cotton. And I did like a little wrapped French knot. And then that's how it's adhered. This I wrapped and then I wrapped the, I did four, um, you know, stitches around. And then I wrapped the four and bound them so that they would make it kind of this ropey looking thing. This is a piece I've been working on for my improvisational stitching class. We've been working on, um, you know, uh, creating your own improvisational stitching piece. And I talk about, oh, we cover, you know, elements of design, um, sort of the basic design concepts, composition, color, a little bit of color theory. Um, we delve into all, all kinds of things, how to get disparate parts of your piece flowing, how to start, how to work through fear, um, how to really insert your own individual and unique voice into your piece so it doesn't look like anyone else's. Um, just, you know, all that kind of stuff. And it's been just so much fun, this workshop. I've just been loving it. We did five. I, I did it with five so that we meet five consecutive Saturdays. And, um, I think that was actually quite successful. I asked everyone, uh, we have one more Saturday next week and we're going to cover, um, finishing, um, just sort of evaluating if everything's flowing together, and then what to do with your piece. Um, I'm going to go over some different ideas of how to finish the piece so that if you wanted to hang it, you could hang it. Um, framing, floating a piece on a frame, things like that. And I asked them whether they felt that the five Saturdays was the best way to go or would it have been better to do, say, um, you know, uh, five consecutive days and they felt strongly that the five Saturdays were good because they needed that week in between to work on their piece. And I 
think with this uh, improvisational stitching class, it probably is good to have that week in between because there's just so much more that one can and probably needs to do. But yeah, it's been really, really, really fun. So this is my hand dyed linen that my friend Pat, Polly, whom I adore, you guys have heard all about Pat, um, sent me. And this piece, I'm actually thinking, so here's the piece. And what I'm thinking of doing is sewing these two pieces together and stitching on this one and then sewing them together. Um, that's, that's one of my thoughts. Anyway, what I've got going here and organisms, microscopic images of various living organisms is what my inspiration is for this. And I am having an absolute blast with this piece. It is so much fun. My latest idea, I just want to show you what my latest idea was. Where did I put it? I had a strip. Oh, here it is right in front of me. See, this is what happens. I'm thinking this is a strip of sari um, strips, you know, the Indian saris. And this is from Steph Francis. They do such a gorgeous job with their dyeing. So my thought was that I was going to couch this down along this piece like this. I don't know that I'm going to couch this as well because I think then maybe, but maybe I'll couch this part down, just half of it, and then couch the other and see how I think, you know, sort of see what I think of that. And I might leave this sort of flowing off. That's kind of my thinking at this point. I bought these big things from Steph Francis. I'm going to show you. It's a whole thing. So it's a huge amount. Look at this. Is this just fabulous though? I love this. And, um, and I'm thinking, you know, gosh, I bought all this stuff and what am I going to do with it? Well, this is something I might do with it. I'll see. The other thing I got, and I actually cut a big piece out. This is bark also from Steph Francis. And I cut out a big piece of this and attached it to my improv piece um, here. And I've just sort of done a running stitch in a in a the thread gatherer has a blue Hawaii. They've got a thread that just totally matches that, and it and so it you can't even see, but it's a running stitch. You can see on the back. And I went around the sort of knot the knot in the tree, I felt like. And now I'm going to go in and I'm going to use a lot of threads and, and stitch on here and sort of going off. But I love that. Isn't that cool? So this is the bark from Steph Francis. I'll put all these links in the description section. And they come in all different colors too. Um, okay. So here... I've got this piece. I think I'll use this one. I don't, I think I want it sort of like that. And I think I need something quite substantial to couch it with. Um, my first thought was to do it in, in this kind of gold, but I actually don't know that I want to do that. I think I might do it more in keeping with this color. So it's not so obvious. Um, this would be a good, this is the spun silk with flames, a number six. And I don't know, I feel like I need something a little bit more substantial than that. I guess it really depends on what I'm sort of going for. Do I want it to kind of disappear or do I want the stitch the thread itself to become kind of a selling point. And I'm not, I'm actually not sure. So maybe what I'll do, 
to just show you what I do here. So these are all threads that I've pulled and I've all jammed them in this basket. But the problem is when you do this is that then it becomes impossible to even see what you've got in here because I've got so much and there's just layers and layers. And this becomes almost ridiculous. Like it's overflowing and I can't find anything. And I'm not sure how helpful this really is. Like, oh, here's the thread that I was thinking would be great for... Um, <laughs> for couching. So I may have to redo this because this is kind of silly and I think defeats the purpose of pulling threads. I mean, honestly, there's my storage system and I can see the threads much more easily than I can if they're stuck in this basket. So I think I'm going to have to spend a little time reorganizing everything. The other thing I wanted to show you was this. These are beads that I got uh, from... Um, sorry. These are the beads that I got from the bead chest. And I think these beads are going to look amazing um, on here. You know, I think this could look really, really cool. I'm not sure how, but I'm loving this one in particular. Um, these, these are, they're all African. These are, Af this is paper that's been wrapped around and then painted and then they like do a shellac over them. How cool is that though? And then these are little seashells, which I just love. And they've got a little hole in them. Really pretty. Isn't that beautiful? I love the way that, that's amazing. Anyway, okay, so there's that, there's that. I've got these, I think these could really, I don't know, there's some, there's sort of an African feel to this, which, I, which I'm which i loving, and I think would really lend itself nicely to some of these beads. And so I'm going to play around with that. So I've got lots of things going on here. I've got my sari fabric, I've got my t-shirting over here, I've got beading, I've got all kinds of things um, to play with. And yeah, so I'm just going to start stitching. All right, so here's what I'm doing. Um, so I'm taking my bit of sari and I am couching it down and I'm using... I just love the texture selection. Now they have, um, Steph Francis does a regular, it's just called texture selection and that's cotton threads, pearl cottons, and it's five different threads. This is the silk texture selection and it's five different threads. And I'm just gonna separate them so you can see what you get. Um, what I love about this is that all these threads are in the exact same colorway. You get a boucle, you get a silk chenille, you get a, um, what would be, what do they call it? I think they're calling it a pearl silk. Um, it's the equivalent of this, a silk pearl. And I believe it's a five weight, yes. So five weight silk pearl. And then they include this. Um, oh, and this is the spun silk with flames. And it's kind of nubby. So it goes from, I'd say, a 12 weight up to an 8, maybe, yeah, an 8 weight. Maybe even a little bit bigger in the biggest nub areas. And then this one which I'm not even sure what you would call it, but it's just lovely. It feels like cashmere. It is so soft and the colors are just luscious. So I'm using that one, whatever this is. And then if you like the, one of these, you can then find them on the site individually and buy an individual skein. But what's lovely about this is that you get five different threads all in the same colorway and you can try out and see which ones you really love. Like the boucle for me um, is really beautiful and I love couching it. I can't stitch with it because it's got a nubby bit to it. So it's really a thread that needs to be um, couched 
or in some way just used without pulling in and out of fabric. It, it's not going to do well with that. Um, so I probably won't use it quite as much as some of these others. But I love having them all here so that I can explore and play and just sort of, you know, it, they, I always think of something new that I can do with these. So I love this. I love this selection. I think it's so smart of them to do that. All right. So, so that's what I'm doing. I'm couching this bit down. And right now I just went sort of smack dab middle. And what I'm thinking was that I was going to end it here. And then I have this other strip and I was going to couch it in the same way. Um, and going across, hiding this edge under this. And I was thinking I would not do this bit. <sighs> but now I'm looking at it and I'm thinking, maybe I should do it on this edge. And I'm wondering what it would look like if it weren't smack dab, sort of, well, this isn't even centered anyway. But if I took it out and did it along the edge. And so... That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to pull this out. Um, I'm actually going to try to save this thread. I'm going to not just cut it. I'm going to try to save it. And I'm going to redo it and couch it along the edge and see how that, how that looks. So I'll turn the camera back on when I've done all that. I have this bit done on the side. And I've left this, uh, I couched it right to here, which I may regret because I'm actually going to be clipping that. So I'm not sure was it, what I was thinking there. In any case, I'm going ahead and I'm going right along the edge here and couching it with this big, thick rope of silk thread and pulling it as I go. Um, and I figure I'll just do this all the way up and over that bit till I get to the other end and then um Then I think I'm going to do this palestrina knot in the, um, what is this? This is the painter's thread. I don't even know where I put it, but I have it, I hope. And um, I'll do the painter's thread going up the other side. I think that's what I'm going to do. So I did it on both sides here, and I think I'll do it along this edge here and couch the silk sari bit along here. And then I think I'll start stitching in here a little bit. I don't know, well, you know, it's improv. I don't have to know. I just start doing something and then, you know, evaluate and see what I think. And then I'll come back and do something else. And, but this is really cool, this big, kind of chunk, like, um, you know, making it into a chord, sort of changing what it is and creating something else from it. I love that. I have to ask Pat what kind of linen this is that she used. I love it. It's a heavier weight than um, what I've been using. And it's, I'm pretty sure it's a pure linen. And it's just, I just love how nubby it is. I love the texture of it. It's really nice to stitch through. So I'll have to find out from her where she bought this. I have a linen source where I can purchase some, but it's not like this, I don't think. I 
Okay, so I'm going to keep going here, and um, I'll come back when I'm when I've finished this bit, so you can see what it looks like, and then I'll figure out what I'm doing next. Okay, I'll pull this back so you can see. So here it is. Back even more, and I've couched it along the edge and I'm going to do this palestrina knot along this edge here and then I'm going to start stitching in here. Um, I'm using this, my painter's thread Klimt. It's this sort of fabulous yellow golden whatever and put this on an 18 chenille. But I think I like this uh, couched cord here. That kind of adds something. It's pretty cool. And then I do think I'm going to add a bead, some sort of bead. I just feel like it could use something, but I'm not sure. And I'm kind of thinking that I'm going to use these um, somewhere in here. So I'll just put those off to the side for now. And I'm going to go ahead and do my palestrina knot here. For those of you who are new to stitching and perhaps and are not familiar with the palestrina knot, I'm going to put the video that I did on the palestrina knot in the upper right corner of this video. But what I love about the palestrina knot is that it's a pretty chunky knot when you do it in a three weight, which is what this painter said is. And I also like using, uh, doing it pretty close together. So you get this kind of ridge and um, you can do it farther apart, but I like the way it looks when it's close. I don't pull too tight either, by the way. I, um, like when I go here, I'm not pulling that. I'm just kind of letting it do its thing. And like I said, I like to keep them pretty close. So they're pretty dense, densely packed in here. So instead of looking like a stitch with a knot and then a stitch with a knot, it kind of has this, uh, the knots are all so close together, it gives the effect of just this ridge. It's really lovely textural three-dimensional ridge, which I just love. And I'm going to keep going with this. Isn't that cool looking though? I love that. And I'm going to go with this all the way up and along here. This is, I cut the sari off. I had it couched up to here. I'll either undo the knot and pull that out and then re-knot it in the back or I will do something over it. I haven't figured that out and I'm not gonna worry about it for now, but I'm gonna do that palestrina all the way up. It's very cool looking, isn't it? Yeah, so that's my plan. Okay, so I feel like I want, so I like this. This looks good. I wanna tie in this into here. So I'm going to just do a few, um, I think just a few French knots here. Maybe like a little cluster of them over here. And 
You see there's more yellow here, so I could scatter some up here, and I think I'll do a little, a few down here, and maybe a few in some of the spaces over here that are kind of that yellow. Um, just to pull that gold off the big X and get your eye moving because it's a pretty bold, you know, and that shape is pretty bold. And the thing about a big X is that, of course, your eye immediately goes to a big X, right? It's like a bullseye. And so I just want to coax the viewer's eye to move To not just stay on it to sort of create some interest over here. So I'm gonna do that. And I think it's time to bring in some other color. That's good. Anyway, I'm running out of thread. And uh let's see. So I can keep going with that, but I really want to work on this. So I think I'm going to do that. And I think I'm going to use a lot of the threads that I used over here. I'll bring them over here as well. That's kind of what I'm thinking at this point. Well, I was going to, I was hoping I'd get all of this done and then I'd sort of show you, but I've got too many other things that are yelling at me to deal with um one of which is my website so i've got to i've got to go deal with some stuff over there um so this is what i've got so far and you know so i'm going to do something similar here something like that over here and as i said before i think i'll add some beads of some kind this is looking very white. I may have to paint that. I'm not sure I like it. Um, if it's really kind of, you know, screaming, look at me. I'm not sure why, you know, I don't want to look at you. I think I'll just get out some pastels and color that. Um, yeah, so thanks so much for watching. And I hope you got some stitching done as I was doing mine. Don't forget to hit the thumbs up button and subscribe. And until next time, let's keep stitching together.